Hi. So in this video, we proceed uh, discussing the problem of asymmetric information in strategic games. And this one is devoted to Bayesian inference in attacker-defender game, attacker-defender game in general, and how the presence of Bayesian inference affects the outcome of attacker-defender game. So probably we should start with the notion of Bayesian inference and Bayesian inference or Bayesian updating can be described as the process of transforming prior beliefs in the light of new information. So generally it's described by this formula where PH stands for prior distribution which describes prior beliefs, H stands for space of all the available hypotheses. Uh, X stands for data, and P of H conditional to X describes the function, um, stands for the function describing the process of transforming your prior beliefs into posterior beliefs in the light of new information. So you do not have to learn this formula by heart, you only need to understand how Bayesian updating works. So to give some stupid and relatable example, let's say that your prior belief is that all Italians movies are bad. So you estimate the probability uh, that randomly picked Italian movie is bad as probability equal to 100%. So this is your prior distribution or your prior belief. Then you observe some real life data I mean, you watch some Italian movies and, you know, basically you notice that some of them are indeed bad, but some of them are pretty good. And then you transform your beliefs. So now uh, you estimate the probability that randomly picked Italian movie is bad uh, as probability which is not equal to 100%, but let's say... 95% or something. So this is what Bayesian inference is about. Uh, in strategic games, perfect Bayesian equilibrium occurs when um, at each information set uh, the player takes into account all the available information, uh, including probabilities of alternatives if information is not definite. Um, less formally, it means that players draw the correct inferences from their observation as specified by bias rule for updating probabilities. So, even less formally, uh, you can say that um, under a perfect Bayesian equilibrium, uh, players are able to transform and update their beliefs about the type of other players uh, in the light of new information, so by observing actions undertaken by other players. Probably this sounds pretty abstract at this point, so we will discuss it based on an example. Okay, so this is the general setting for attacker-defender game. And attacker-defender game is some general setting, framework of the strategic game, like Prisoner's Dilemma or Chicken Game. So basically, it can be applied uh, for analyzing numerous possible strategic interactions, including dating, as we are going to discuss. But in this particular case, the setting is as follows. So assume that our game has two players, attacker and defender. So attacker should decide of whether to invade or not to invade. At the same time, attacker is aware of the fact that there are two possible types of defenders. So defender can be weak or defender can be tough. So if attacker invades and uh, defender is weak, then attacker gets payoff of positive 5 and defender gets a payoff of negative 5. Uh, if attacker invades and uh, defender is tough, then both players lose 10, so they get payoff of negative 10. 
The problem is that attacker is unable to define the exact type of the defender. Attacker only knows that there is 25% probability of dealing with tough defender and 75% probability of dealing with weak defender. Uh, both defenders, regardless of their type, can signal and the cost of signaling is identical for defenders of both types. It's equal to negative 6. So, uh, I would ask you to draw this game in the extensive form, taking into account that the sequence of moves will be as follows. So first, nature will decide uh, whether defender is weak or tough, then defender will decide whether to signal or not to signal, and then attacker will decide uh, whether to invade or not to invade. Uh, please make sure that you depict all the information sets properly, and it's indeed visible that attacker is unable to figure out the type of the defender. So I assume you put this video on hold and do some practice, and I will proceed with the solution. So here it is. As I said, first nature decides whether defender is weak or tough, so probability of a weak defender is equal to 75%, and probability of dealing with tough defender is equal to 25%. Then defender decides whether to signal or not to signal, and keep in mind that here we have two information sets. So attacker is unable to say whether defender is tough or weak. Attacker can make a decision in this information set, uh, observing signaling uh, made, whatever, undertaken by defender in the previous round, or not signaling. So that's why you depict it in this way. So talking about payoffs. So let's assume that defender is weak and defender decided to signal and attacker decided uh, to invade. So in this case, the defender will bear the cost of negative 11. So the cost of signaling negative 6 plus the cost of invasion negative 5 and attacker will get 5. Uh, if defender decides to signal and attacker decides not to invade, then there will be no cost associated with invasion, only the cost of signaling, negative 6, and attacker will get 0. If defender decides not to signal and attacker decides to invade, then negative 5 for defender, 5 for attacker, and if attacker decides not to invade at all, then both players get nothing. So nothing happens. Okay. If defender is tough and defender decided to signal, then attacker might invade and then attacker will lose 10 and defender will lose 16. So 10 because of invasion and 6 because of signaling. And if attacker decided not to invade, then defender will lose 6 because of signaling. And that's it. So the payoff will be negative 6, 0. If defender decided not to signal, I mean tough defender decided not to signal, then um, both players lose 10 uh, in case attacker invades and the payoffs are equal to 0 in case attacker decides not to invade. So as simple as it is. So it's kind of obvious that uh, attacker should attack if he knows, attacker should invade if he knows for sure that defender is weak because then attacker will get positive payoff. And attacker should never invade if defender is tough, because then attacker will get negative payoff. So it would be very obvious if we deal uh, with the game with perfect information, but this is not the case in this game. So attacker is unable to say whether defender is weak or tough. Attacker is only able to see whether there was some signal or there wasn't any signal in the previous round. Okay, so obviously signaling is costly, uh, and the main purpose of signaling is to help a uh, better informed party to achieve the desirable strategic game outcome, you know, by making sure that worse informed party 
is able to figure out the type of the player. So separating equilibrium occurs when worse informed party is able to figure out the true type of the other player. Okay, so as I said, attacker should invade if defender is weak and attacker shouldn't invade when defender is tough. And obviously both uh, defenders, I mean defenders of both type, are better off when there is no invasion. So in this case, we can easily say that tough defender will never pretend to be a weak defender. Because, as I mentioned before, if attacker knows for sure that he is dealing with tough defender, attacker will never invade. So that's why tough defender has a kind of advantage, you know. There is no reason for tough defender to pretend to be a weak defender. However, weak defender might try to pretend to be a tough defender. This is how it works. Okay, so in this table you can see the payoffs of defenders associated with the different combination of strategies. So, in this case, we have only two crucial payoffs for weak defender and for tough defender. So, obviously, for both party, not signaling would be the dominant strategy if the game would be a game with simultaneous moves. Because, you know, regardless of the type of the attacker, um, Signaling is associated with additional cost. That's why both parties can be better off with no signaling. However, uh, what you have to do is to assume that signaling might be the way allowing players, I mean defenders, to... How to say it? Um, to pretend or reveal... Uh, their type of tough defender. Okay, let's do it in this way. So what you have to compare is the payoff of weak defender if there is invasion when there is no signal and when there is no invasion with signal because those two are crucial. We assume that we just test the hypothesis that signaling will prevent attacker from invasion. So in this case, you have to compare those two payoffs and it's easy to figure out that weak defender will be better off with no signaling and invasion than with signaling and no invasion. Yeah, we compare no signaling and invasion and signaling and no invasion. So basically, it's better not to signal, you know, and let the attacker invade the country because it's associated with the payoff equal to negative 5 than to prevent invasion by signaling. So in this case, we can say that signaling is simply too costly for weak defender. Weak defender would prefer, you know, just giving up without any fight and without any attempt to signal and losing five than with signaling and losing six, even when there is no invasion. So based on this, we can conclude that weak defender will never signal, even if weak defender knows for sure that signaling will prevent invasion it still makes no sense to signal for the weak defender. So, sorry. So, while weak defender will never decide to signal, for tough defender, signaling actually makes sense. Because if we assume that signaling will prevent attacker from invasion, then tough defender is better off with signaling and having no invasion and getting negative 6 than with no signaling and invasion, and getting negative 10. So based on this, we can conclude that weak defender will never signal. So weak defender will never signal, and that's why 
uh, if attacker sees the player signaling, he can be sure that he is dealing with tough defender. Because, as I said before, weak defender will never signal. Keeping this in mind, tough defender will always signal. So, in equilibrium, tough defender signals and attacker does not invade. And weak defender does not signal and attacker invades. This is how it works. Okay, just to illustrate you that here everything depends on the cost of signaling. Uh, let us assume that now the cost of signaling is 4 instead of 6. So now please draw the new game in the extensive form and please analyze whether signaling can still help to achieve separating equilibrium. If it's easier for you, you can do the same table. Okay. So I assume you put this video on hold and practice because you will get some something very similar as your assignment for this week. And I proceed with the solution. Okay, so now the payoffs are as follows. Uh, so it's very similar. I will not concentrate on this. But basically now when you subtract cost of signaling you know when defender decides to signal you subtract four not six and this is our table so take a look as for now both weak and tough defenders would prefer to signal so if we assume that attacker will not invade if weak defender or tough defender or any defender signals, then for weak defender, signaling and no invasion are associated with payoff equal to negative 4. At the same time, not signaling and invasion, not signaling and invasion are associated with payoff of negative 5. So now, for weak defender, it's better to signal and, and avoid invasion than to be invaded and avoid signaling. And actually, the same will apply to tough defender. You know, it's still better to signal and avoid invasion than not to signal and be invaded. So, at this case, uh, I mean, under this cost of signaling, both weak and tough defenders will signal if this allows to prevent invasion. At the same time, it will not allow to prevent invasion because attacker will be aware of this fact. So now attacker knows that, you know, both countries would like to signal if this would allow them to avoid invasion. And that's why when attacker sees some player signaling, it can be both tough and weak defenders. Because as we discussed before, both countries have an incentive to signal in order to avoid invasion. So in this case, we can actually forget about this equilibrium and conclude that signaling will not help to achieve separating equilibrium anymore. So if separating equilibrium is not possible, uh, we can try pooling and we can start with attacker, you know, calculate uh, attacker's expected payoff from invasion to figure out whether attacker will have any incentive to invade even without knowing the type of the player. And here I mean the type of the defender. So you know that probability that defender is tough is equal to 25% and probability that defender is weak is equal to 75%. I'm sorry. So here you have it. So here you calculate the expected payoff of invasion as probability that defender is tough and payoff from invasion if defender is tough plus probability that defender is weak times payoff of invasion if defender is weak. And this gives you 1.25. So, based on this, we conclude that since expected payoff of no invasion is equal to zero, then attacker would rather invade, you know, because even without knowing the type of the defender, uh, the expected payoff from invasion is possible. So, if attacker is unable to update his beliefs, 
and this is what happens here in uh, this game. Invasion is the optimal strategy. So, as we discussed a second ago, attacker is going to attack anyway if attacker is unable to figure out the type of the defender. So, we know that if attacker is going to attack anyway, you know, then for both countries, uh, the preferred strategy, I mean for both type of defenders, uh, the preferred strategy is not to signal. Because, you know, attacker is going to attack anyway, so why to bear any additional cost? So defender will not signal regardless of his type. And yeah, this is an equilibrium. Attacker, attacker will attack anyway, uh, because even without any information about type of the defender, expected payoff is positive. And keeping in mind that attacker will attack anyway, it makes no sense to signal. However, again, please keep in mind that this pooling, like, no, 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 outcome of the game in pooling is valid only as long as you assume that uh, players are unable to update their beliefs. And here I mean attacker, because attacker is the only player to update his beliefs. So, alternatively, we can assume that players are able to update their beliefs, I mean, attacker is able to update his beliefs. And we can try to define semi-separating equilibrium in this case. So, speaking informally, semi-separating equilibrium can be defined as the mix of separating and pooling equilibrium. And, yeah. Okay, so as we discussed before, uh, let's assume that tough defender always chooses to signal. So, in this case, we have to figure out uh, what is the condition for weak defender to signal or not to signal. So, let's say that weak defender will signal with probability equal to x, and probability that attacker observes defender signaling is calculated as follows. So, this is the probability of seeing a tough player, uh, 25% times the probability that player will signal if he is tough, which is equal to 100%, as we mentioned here. So we know that probability of seeing a weak defender, of dealing with weak defender, is equal to 75%, and probability that weak defender will signal is equal to x. So what I mean is that uh, probability of seeing the player signaling can be decomposed into probability of seeing weak defender signaling and tough defender signaling. So probability that tough defender will signal um, will be the intercept of two probabilities. That player is tough and that the player will signal if the player is tough. So again, this one is equal to 0 0.25 and this one is equal to 100%. Analogously here, probability of a uh, probability that uh, weak defender will signal is calculated as the product of probability of dealing with weak defender and probability that weak defender will signal. As simple as it is, hopefully. You can see some graphical illustration of what I discussed. So, the probability that the defender signals can be calculated as the sum of probabilities that weak defender signals and tough defender signals. So, as we discuss here. At the same time, let's analyze it for weak defender. Probability that weak defender signals is equal to probability of signaling times probability of seeing weak defender. So that's why we calculate probability that weak defender signals as 0 0.75 times x. Hopefully it's clear. So now actually it's time to apply bias theorem. So as you remember, this is the general formula for bias theorem. We are interested in probability of seeing tough defender 
if we see some defender signaling. So the probability of tough conditional to signaling or tough if signal is equal to probability that defender will signal if he is tough times probability of seeing tough defender divided by probability of signaling. So as we discussed before, a uh, tough defender will always signal. So there is 100% probability that defender will signal if he is tough. Uh, there is 25% probability of seeing tough defender. And we divide it by the probability of signaling calculated before. So uh, analogously, if you calculate the probability of dealing with weak defender if there is signaling, it will look in this way. So yeah, here we have it calculated for tough defender and I leave it to you to verify that this is the probability of dealing with weak defender if attacker observes defender signaling. So here we have it, and now we can actually calculate the expected payoff of invasion with new probabilities. So in this case, we assume that uh, attacker is able to update his beliefs. Uh, that's why instead of just having probability of tough or weak defender, we insert conditional probability of dealing with tough and weak defender respectively, uh, conditional to their signals. Yeah, conditional to attacker seeing defender signaling. Okay, it's a very complex structure. Okay, so here we have it. So now I will just, you know, underline it because judging on my experience, usually it creates some problem with understanding. So now this is conditional probability that attacker is tough if defender is tough if defender signals. And this is conditional probability that defender is weak if defender signals. At the same time, expected payoff from not invasion is equal to zero. Okay, so if weak defender would like to find the optimal probability mix and make the attacker indifferent between invasion and no invasion, then we have to equalize attacker's expected payoff from invasion to the expected payoff from associated with no invasion. So we do it, we calculate it, and this gives you probability equal to 2 over 3. So as you remember, X stands for the probability that weak defender will signal, and here we have the optimal value of X. So weak defender will signal with probability 2 over 3, and in this case attacker will be indifferent between invading and not invading. Now suppose that attacker will attack seeing signal with probability of Y. So if weak defender signals, then his expected payoff from signaling is equal to negative 9 times y. As you remember, negative 9 is the payoff associated with the outcome when attacker invades and, and defender decides to signal. Uh, plus negative 4 times 1 minus y. So this is just the cost of signaling without any cost of being invaded. And when weak defender does not signal, his expected payoff is equal to negative 5, like the payoff from being invaded times y. So defender of the weak type will mix if probability of invasion under signaling is equal to 1 over 5. At the same time, we can verify our hypothesis and check whether, you know, tough defender will indeed choose to signal always in with 100% probability. So first, in order to do this, we can check expected payoffs associated with mixed strategies. So as you remember, we calculated that y is equal to 1 over 5. So when signaling, um, okay.
At the same time, we can verify whether Tough Defender will always choose to signal with 100% probability. So, as a remember, we calculated probability uh, that, sorry, attacker, that Okay. At the same time, keeping in mind what we calculated a second ago, we can try to figure out whether Tough Defender will always choose to signal as we discussed before. So, as you remember, probability of invasion um, when Defender signals was calculated as 1 over 5. So, based on this, we can calculate Tough Defender's pay of un under signaling. So here we, are, here we have it, like cost of invasion and cost of signaling times probability of attack even if uh, defender signals, uh, plus negative 4 times probability that attacker will not attack seeing a signal. And keeping in mind that y is equal to 1 over 5, it gives you 6. At the same time, tough defender's payoff under no signaling is equal to negative 10. Uh, that's why Tough Defender will prefer a pure strategy of signaling, you know. Even under this probability, it's always better for the Tough Defender to signal, because signaling is associated with bigger payoff. Okay, so I think that was it, and thank you for watching.